Hello everyone and welcome back to 4Science and Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access. We are going to try to land at Stargazer Point as part of the Curb Wide Tour. It is down here and it looks like it's sort of west of the Space Center Dove Southwest. That's good because if we start out at daylight here, we'll probably end up at daylight down there. And that'll be good compared to the last mission. Uh, of course, I'm going in order of the secondary missions uh, considering their difficulty. At, well, perceived difficulty. I, I'm, I'm gonna make things more difficult for myself, I'm, I'm, self, I'm sure. But uh, we are going to launch a vessel with a lantern can, and uh, this seems like the simplest of these, though. Again, because I'm going to, in this case, use a VTOL plane, a vertical takeoff and landing plane, uh, it's gonna be much more difficult than those uh, other ones. Uh, yeah, but anyway, uh, conceptually, it would be easier if I wasn't doing that. So I think the consensus in the comments was that I should make a vertical takeoff and landing plane instead of this, <laughs> instead of this uh, business. Uh, yeah, actually though, I should save the version of this that isn't overburdened with oxidizer. Let's see, let's just make sure to fix it up if I ever want to test it again to see its actual capabilities. We can see now the center of mass is very far over there. Uh, but what I wanted to do was actually put a proper methane tank there. Well, that's two tons of methane. And yeah, that's basically the tilt that we had that we weren't supposed to have right there. So maybe we'll underfuel this one. We just won't have anything in it. That's a little bit more centered. I'm almost tempted to try and fly it right now, but we'll, we'll wait on that. I want a little bit more mass on this side. Oh, there was the atmospheric. Maybe we should have some sort of atmospheric science. Air sniffer. That's very small, but there's, uh, there's a little sniffer, radial one. That we could just stuck, stick on the side then. Uh, is there any reason to have the air sniffer if we've got the little sniffer? Okay, but now for something completely different. We're just gonna have a jet-only VTOL. I actually prefer VTOLs that are rocket VTOLs. The rocket engines are downward-facing ones, and then, but that's more useful for other planets or moons uh, with lower gravity than for Kerbin. Um, but jet engines, as the actual vertical takeoff and landing engines, can be a little bit annoying. More so than on the previous thing we want to have very good balance. So we're looking at 2.625, 2.628 up front with the probe core there. And I do want to test it with the probe core first, of course. And then we will have a single engine, but we want the pod as well. So I'm going to use the Explorer pod to partly counterbalance the cockpit. And I'm also going to put an engine. So that is 0.67 and then we want a two-ton engine. Well that's close. So we've got a whiplash there. But we need 0.2 tons more. This is getting a little bit longish. These intakes wouldn't be great for that. But I don't anticipate us going too past too far past Mach 1. Adjustable ramp air intake might be better though. That's interesting. That actually sort of solves two problems. Okay, but these don't need oxidizer. And now the fuel is going to move around a bit. So that's not great. And we still don't have enough mass in the back. Maybe I should move these further back. Well, I might as well put a little sniffer on this too. We'll put that right, right, right on the back here. Still, I want that to be right at the center of the tanks. And it's not right now. But we have to put a wing, and the wing will be behind, on average, the center of mass. This time I'm doing canards, I swear. Well, we don't want to block the view of the cockpit. So, I'm, I mean, or not that, I mean, not, not the main cockpit, I mean the Mark 1 cockpit, <laughs> as it is right now. Uh, so, we will have stabilizers on the outer edge here. 
And it's not ideal for y'all because it will add a little bit of a roll moment. But since we've got the cockpit there, the other option is to mount them on these pods. Which might not be too bad an idea. Yeah, since the thing those vertical stabilizers are attached to is tilted, worried that they might be just uh, subtly tilted. Oh, okay, I'm making it worse. Subtly tilted and would cause us more drag or some weird effect. Okay, well, anyway, at this point, we should try and figure out the liftoff engines, the vertical engines. We would like these engines not to be very long, <laughs> obviously. So the whiplashes are out. I mean, 120 kN, uh, we're looking at right at the start. And I feel like the Weas Weasleys are probably the better idea. But these Panthers have vectoring range, which would be awesome. <laughs> uh, which would probably be uh, save us a lot of trouble. But the Weas... Weasleys are more efficient. Heavy, though. But they're not that much more efficient than the cruise version of these. It's just these have afterburner. Well, I'm going to try and mount these and see what happens. We'll have to action group stuff, of course, this time. Be negligent about that most of the time. And definitely two. Okay, so let's say I turn off the thrust from this one. That's pretty close. Okay, well, at first blush that seems like it would be good. It says it has... Okay, now it says it has a thrust weight of 0.943 though. Hmm. When we try to actually land at the location, we'll be lighter because we don't have as much fuel. So there's that. But is this really going to be enough? That is a tough thing to determine. The Goliath was certainly more efficient, 12,600 seconds of equivalent ISP because we're not breathing, we're not carrying the oxygen and all, it's easier. But 9,000 for the Panther isn't bad. The 4,000 for the Whiplash is pretty bad. Um, if we're not going to go fast, maybe I should just go with the Panther, but then again, that's gonna unbalance us again. <laughs> we're using the Whiplash uh, to have more mass in the tail. Okay, let me just put the landing gear on and see. We need the landing gear to extend below these things. Oh, the small landing gear is very small compared to the medium landing gear, or much lighter. Impact tolerance is not great, though. But it does cover the engine. But I have to worry about compression. I feel like we should just go with the medium ones. Oh, 0.25 tons, though. Okay, control surface time. Those only pitch. These need to be further out, but first I'll tell them to be only roll. And we don't want them clipping into this intake pod. And these only yaw. Okay, action groups. Okay, cycle mode on the Panthers is one. Toggle engine... Two, and toggle engine on the Whiplash 3. I don't know, I still think I should have the Panther in the back, but uh, we'll, we'll see how this goes. Okay. Um, the, the location is Star something, right? I'm just going to call this the Starlight. Now, without a Kerbal inside, we will check it on the runway. Okay, empty seat, mod propellant still in. <laughs> okay. Uh, we will have this, this is off, but shouldn't activate initially. Okay, gotta switch modes. 
There we go. Okay, activate the whiplash. Okay, change modes on those again. And switch them off. Oh, can we switch them off? Um, I really want to switch them off now. Well, if I just... I can't click deactivate either. Okay. Right. I'm just gonna use the thrust limiter. I don't know about how to shut them off otherwise, so we'll just use the thrust limiter, I suppose. Okay, now handling. Again, first flight. Eight tons only. We carried a lot more for the previous mission. And we weren't trying to be a VTOL. Maybe I should have drop tanks. I've tried to maintain the balance properly, but we'll see whether that actually ends up happening right. more or less happy how it handles. I mean, we don't have to get it doing really fancy maneuvers after all. Well, <laughs> depending on how I land. We used a chunk of fuel right there though, so... Will this really work? So, still a long trip. I feel like it's not quite as long as the last one, but... Well, I guess I should test the VTOL landing, though. Okay, well, let me unthrust limit these guys. Oh, uh, it says off now. Let me try and activate them. And switch modes. And... I need to switch this off. I guess thrust limiting is the way to go there. Okay, a little bit too much sideways. We've got, but gotta watch out for that. Beetles aren't very good at controlling yaw because their main surfaces responsible for that don't get air over them. Oh, 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 not ideal. So this might be a bit of a problem. Um, well, we can always do that. All right. Um, so th there might be that little problem. I'll have to be a little bit more careful about that. Let's recover this. In a way, mod propellant could help with keeping the balance, but let's just get rid of it. You know, if we put RCS thrusters and everything. But they're not very efficient at sea level anyway. And then we've got a reaction wheel. That's one thing we have that real VTOLs don't have. Okay. Well... Chucks. <laughs> I guess we should put a Kerbal in, and possibly a ladder, and so Kerber, Neil Dunn, uh, or I think all of them, oh, Gil Gilul, I don't think we've sent Gilul anywhere, so okay. So yeah, we'll send Gilul, Gilul, and we'll put a ladder. We'll see what happens. 
I actually don't know which mode of takeoff would be best. I think we should just not do the VTOL takeoff. We'll save, save the VTOL for when we land. Probably would be a little bit more efficient. So, alright. Uh, let's switch... Oh. Doesn't want to switch staging, does it? Okay. Gotta activate all the engines. And then thrust limit these. How about that? Make sure it can actually take off normally. Also gives me an idea what its stall speed is right now. And we're off. But we have to go south. Southwest, in fact. Might be scenic, hopefully. Hopefully we'll get some scenery along the way. Last one was pretty boring, though. I don't know, definitely feeling a hankering for drop tanks. Those engines have got to be causing some drag, right? Those can't be optimal. <laughs> uh, that's the last surface area right there. I don't know how KSP2 calculates drag, but... Well, it better be on those. Of course, if we really overburden it, we won't be able to get off the ground with two of these. We're gaining steadily in thrust, but acceleration is still mild. And we've covered some distance. But I don't think we've hit the stride of this engine quite yet. No, well, it's trying to break the sound barrier. Let's see if it can. I'm gonna call that a no. It's not gonna be able to do that. Yeah, I'm not I'm not thinking that the whiplash is the right thing for this. What if we just had Weasleys in the back? We'll see how far it gets, but problem is this is all water until we get here. There is a point of no return. Since I can't really strongly break the sound barrier, I'll probably throw it down so that we stay subsonic. We'd otherwise just be wasting fuel on that. Oh, suddenly we're going faster. Um, okay, maybe it can do speed of sound sort of things? Let's see. Maybe it likes it better at this altitude. We're transonic. It's still getting sticky. Let's see. It'll still guzzle more fuel at higher speeds though. It's not like it's a no trade-off thing. I don't think it's getting past definitively. We really need to get to 400 meters per second for that. We seem to be using a lot more pitch trim than we were before. Which means we're nose heavy. So much like the previous mission, I'm gonna pump some fuel back into those pod tanks. We're... Maybe a little bit past a third of our trip, but we're approaching halfway through our fuel. But rebalancing the fuel is with reference to the center of lift, not necessarily what we need for landing. Though right now, whether we'll have enough fuel for a VTOL landing is a whole question. Now well, we're getting a little bit high here. Well, okay, fine. Let's pour it on and see if we... <laughs> we can't break the speed of sound, right? Uh... Continuing to try to do that is probably... a character flaw. <laughs> it's a character flaw of mine. 
At this point, I'm just aiming to get it to land. I don't think I can get that far. I should have been running that instrument the whole time. Well, I don't know. But I guess we haven't done it before. Okay, well, apparently... It must be returned to the KSC, so we can't transmit it. Okay. Trying to fix the fuel again. I don't think we have much left to shift, though. We're in Will Gilliddle's Kerman Survive or Not mode here. So, Veto no problem. Getting past Mach 1, problem. And Whiplash, not very useful. Yeah, sorry to say so, but we're definitely trying to land right here and not aiming for that right now. So, we need to replace the whiplash with something a little bit more suited to this. Which, I'm tentatively thinking a Weasley or two. But two Weasleys are pretty heavy. So... Maybe, maybe one Weasley and a couple of those little guys? Something like that. Maybe just one Weasley will be enough. It's not like we need a thrust weight ratio of one in this direction. But we'll see what kind of mass. We'll try and match the mass, maybe. I don't even know what exactly the optimal heading between the KSC and this location would have been. Tried to go 225-ish, but... Okay, well I can see land. I don't need the map anymore. To be brutally honest, it's hard to pull up without the engine running right now. Let me try to rebalance for the last time. You don't have anything else in there. It's getting dangerous. I didn't actually test a regular landing with this, did I? We need a lot of fuel for a VTOL landing, though. I'm aiming for this side, but that's not a whole lot of space. Gotta see how it glides right now. Not well. <laughs> uh oh. You know, what if we actually use these? They have 9,000 in theory, right? <laughs> this might be my undoing, though. Oh, like, we have to. We're in non-afterburning mode, so that they're more efficient. Ooh, that's a weird little effect there. I don't know, all this out of EC stuff that I don't need to know about right now. Okay, coming in. Uh, trying to pull up. Oh, oh. Bad attempt to pull up. Okay, well, it's gonna suck. <laughs> oh, uh, brakes. Okay, okay, uh, brakes. Oh, oh, don't do that. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, stop. All right, well, that was dangerous. Okay, well, Gil will be recovered by ship or something. Uh, but yes, we're going to need to redesign this a little bit for next time. We'll try this again. I, I definitely made it harder on myself than I needed to. A good Goliath plane without any veto. Well, I don't know, the landing location. People have told me that the landing location is a little bit tough, so. Tough to say whether uh, horizontal landing would have worked. Though, maybe far away and then we have the Kerbal walk a whole long way. Who knows? We should, like, carry a rover. 
<laughs> oh, but even that could topple and cause the Kerbal to perish. So anyway, let's recover this. Oh, it's 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 got the adventurous music for some reason. Hmm. Anyway, so yes, next time we'll try a different variant of that and try to get to the location again, whatever it's called. Stargazer Point. So, Stargazer Point and we'll have an upgraded Starlight. But anyway, for now, with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.